right, so I am the last panelist for our <laughs> uh, academic section of the conference, and I'm going to try to do it a little, make it brief to save some of the time. Um, basically, uh, what I want to talk about is I want to look at some, uh, some of my team in his talks, some uh, recent Russian actionism. Uh, in a comparative perspective with uh, certain Western uh, movements that it's often uh, seen as related to in one way or another, uh, but largely in order to kind of uh, tell what's different uh, rather than what's similar, to kind of find these, the, the important minimal differences uh, that we can identify uh, to see what's special uh, about Russian work. So the, the first kind of uh, section of, of um, Art that uh, recent actionism, and especially going to be focusing on the, the Bainan group, um, and I will mention a couple of things, uh, is uh, oppositional actionism of the 1960s. Uh, so we have the Bainan's actionists, uh, who have often been interpreted uh, as um, sort of using uh, uh, violence in their works uh, to uh, to present a kind of opposition to conservative politics. Uh, in Austria after fascism, and fascism, uh, sort of lingering fascist uh, feelings in society. Then there's uh, another example from the 60s, the guerrilla uh, art action group. Uh, this was uh, kind of uh, an early version of museum occupying, kind of similar to what Jody was just talking about, when the, um, they went in and sort of threw cow's blood all over themselves uh, in the Museum of Modern Art in New York to protest uh, Rockefeller's involvement in the, in the Vietnam War, Rockefeller being on board of directors of the uh, An example from uh, Brazil, uh, Arturo Barrio uh, did a number of, of um, works in the late 60s and, and seven, early 70s, uh, reflecting the um, political situation uh, after the US-backed uh, military uh, dictatorship uh, was established, uh, part of this, this general sort of um, uh, collapse of the uh, revolutionary um, impulses of the, of the late 60s and the, the beginnings of, of the neoliberal order that uh, triumphed in 89. Uh, so, for example, in this project, Barrio uh, gathered all sorts of strange things, um, used tampons, feces, uh, various animal parts decaying, wrapped them in, uh, uh, in these packages and, and left them around uh, the city in various places for people to stumble upon. Uh, in some ways, you could, uh, it's, it's often seen as a, as a commentary or a sort of reflection of the uh, violence uh, coming from the state, people being disappeared and so on uh, after the dictatorship was established. Uh, so, um, to compare this then with, with uh, recent Russian things like Vietnam, uh, a couple uh, things we can say about the adoption of oppositional uh, actions in the 60s uh, rejects commodification, the sort of central new avant uh, idea that art should not be a commodity that you can buy and sell, uh, anti-establishment uh, message, using kind of violence in order to protest against violence in society, uh, a certain theatrical quality, uh, trying to uh, engage uh, public, but with this very sort of theatrical mode of the kind of the idea of a happening, right? So we, we, we were there when something happened, uh, but it, in, in many ways it is a kind of show, uh, oriented on transgression uh, and kind of uh, really trying to produce transgressive effects um, often through grotesque imagery and, and grotesque um, corporality bodies. So, uh, in Russian, a couple of differences here. So, the Russian actions in, of uh, recent times, uh, you see uh, attacks on commodities directly. Uh, so, uh, the Vinod uh, throwing cats at McDonald's, uh, with their general love of, of um, actions in supermarkets, rejection of money, uh, instead of uh, this kind of somewhat abstract uh, strategy of using violence to uh, protest violence, uh, we have direct confrontations with police. Uh, as in these examples, um, uh, instead of the, uh, the idea of the happening, this kind of uh, uh, form, idea that you kind of have to be there, to, to sort of get this kind of uh, spectacular effect of the work, uh, you instead uh, use the media, you use the mediation of media to kind of invite that uh, to achieve a more mass uh, cultural impact. Uh, and finally, uh, what I think probably the most interesting part of this section is, is that it's not, these works I don't find, and maybe you disagree with me, I don't find them to be 
uh, actually aspiring to a transgressive effect. Uh, that they, they don't result in the violence of the transgressive gestures that they include. Um, so I mean, just one example, the uh, by now action in the, uh, in the Ashan supermarket in the rape of the Sendris, uh, when they hanged um, uh, uh, three, I can't remember, is it three homosexuals and two uh, migrant workers or the other, or three migrant workers and two homosexuals, one, one or the other, but in any case, uh, the, the clear uh, stage quality of this. Um, on the one hand, it's not necessarily theatrical because it's, it's, uh, it's in the sense that uh, it's being produced for the subsequent um, uh, you know, media uh, transmission uh, more than for the actual experience of people in the supermarket, even though that's, that's a big part of it as well. Uh, it still has a stage quality that sort of uh, removes the, the direct sense of transgression. So the violence that clearly is actually happening. Uh, you might stumble on it and see it and be shocked, uh, but pretty quickly you'll realize that it's fake. Um, okay, so so that's the comparison of the 60s. Now I want to look at some comparisons with, with the sort of uh, 70s body art that all of these things are often uh, seen as related to. Uh, so just a couple quick examples. Uh, Chris Burton's uh, work, uh, Through the Night Softly, uh, 1973, he bought a few, you can't really see any of uh, he bought a few moments of uh, television time and put these, uh, his own uh, videos on TV where he's, uh, in this case, has his uh, hands tied on his back and he's crawling uh, over broken glass. Uh, and so and it's, it's interesting the way, he, just for, for my purpose, you can't really see it at all, but uh, if you can imagine what's happening, he gets closer and closer to the edge of the screen, and by the time it, it runs out, uh, he's, he's sort of left the frame. So there's this kind of important uh, use of, of tele television, this sort of advertising spot as a framing device. Um, another example, Paul McCarthy's Sauce from 1974, uh, where one of uh, McCarthy's performances, um, uh, known for early performances, known for their uh, quite traumatizing effects on viewers. Uh, this one, he took a, uh, some ketchup and proceeded to cover himself in it uh, in various suggestive ways for a very long time, inducing you know vomiting in, in, in himself. Uh, and uh, turning, transforming the commodity into this kind of uh, bottle of food type uh, thing. Uh, another example is Marina Brown, which is freeing the voice from 76, uh, screaming until she loses her voice. Uh, just a short version. <laughs> uh, okay, so some, some, uh, some uh, descriptive kind of uh, categories that have been associated with these types of works. Uh, first of all, in terms of moving away from the 60s uh, type of art that I talked about a second ago, uh, these works are, can, can be characterized by a certain formal purity, right? The, uh, the emphasis on a, a certain very precisely defined uh, activity um, that uh, does not really allow for that sense of kind of being, uh, participating in a show, right? You go to see, there's just this guy covering himself in sauce. You know, you don't know when it's going to end. It doesn't have, a, it doesn't really have a narrative that you can sense uh, uh, associated with it. Um, uh, you know, it doesn't have a script, um, and so, in, in a certain sense, it's 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 reduced. Uh, you know, in a, in a very kind of more um, purely avant-garde type type way, it's reduced to its, its very sort of uh, uh, <coughs> formal center. Um, similar, another uh, related uh, thing we can say about it uh, is the way these works. Uh, reduce the art producer and the product, the work itself, uh, reduce them to a, a, the distance between them as much as possible, producing this kind of tension between uh, what you're looking at. Is, it, am, is this a narcissistic act that I'm, that I'm viewing, uh, or is, is it actually, uh, is the artist completely uh, disappearing in this work? Uh, this is something that, uh, for me, is, is, is a similar um, strategy to this kind of idea of the, the heroic, militant heroic act that we were talking about yesterday. Um, a lot of these works have a, have a critique of uh, expressionism, a critique of art as a communicative act. You see this in the, the freedom of voice, reducing uh, the, the sort of uh, language uh, and expression which art might be expressive, if we have that idea about art, uh, to the raw, um, a sort of bare voice, uh, pre symbolic, or however we want to understand that. Uh, of course, a lot of these works also reference abstract expressionism. I say abstract expressionism painting itself, as with Jackson Pollock. Uh, with McCarthy rubbing 
uh, the, the sauce all over himself and all over this tablecloth, uh, suggesting that in the act of, of painting uh, these abstract uh, uh, paintings like Pollux, there, there's a certain kind of um, primal um, gesture of playing with your own feces, um, or bodily fluids of any kind. Uh, another important thing, this is probably, uh, or these last two things are the most important for me though, uh, that in these acts you get this very interesting tension between uh, your knowledge of the fact that the artist is completely present. This image is similar to what I said uh, about the distance between the artist and, and, the, and the artwork. Uh, the artist is completely present in terms of the will that they are um, uh, invoking to continue with this action, right? They have decided to do this and they are doing it. Uh, while at the same time, the, the, the work itself uh, is in some ways representing or aspiring to a kind of limit condition where rationality would presumably disappear. You see a man covering himself uh, with sauce for so long, it becomes harder and harder to imagine that there's still a subjectivity involved in this, in this process. But at the same time, you know this is a performance, it's been signed by this. Uh, famous artists, or soon to be famous artists, uh, and so you know the rational will is, is always present. Uh, finally, uh, an interesting element that I, that I already kind of mentioned, the arbitrariness of the, the temporality of these works, uh, the degree to which they, they could go on uh, forever, um, or if there's some kind of uh, sort of, um, that limit comes in on, in a very empty way. So Abramovich just screams until her voice runs out. That, that could happen at any time. Uh, depending on her, her vocal cords. Uh, but that is what ends the performance. Uh, okay, so comparing these now with, with uh, by now another uh, uh, Russian actionism. Uh, so we also, I also have, as I mentioned before, there's a move away from the kind of theat theatricality uh, uh, that we see in some of the 60s um, works. Uh, but for me, in, in the Russian stuff, it's more, it comes less through this kind of, uh, this formal tension, this kind of, uh, this real avant-garde uh, purity that you get in the 70s works uh, from the West, uh, and more in a sense of, of confusion with these works, where you don't know what you're actually looking at. Am I supposed to be uh, uh, looking at, um, you know, a proper work of avant-garde art, or is this something political that I'm supposed to be responding to in that? Uh, that there, there is that, that kind of the old, um, you know, just a distinction between uh, autonomy and commitment that, that Katie was talking about uh, yesterday uh, is it, completely confused. Um, so, as an example, Pavlyansky's uh, recent uh, artwork, uh, burning the uh, tires on the, um, uh, the bridge not too far from here, uh, is this, uh, uh, why we have to, uh, it, it becomes problematic even to speak about uh, art politics in the situation. It's, it's almost completely arbitrary. Literally. Call it one, yeah. Um, okay, let me see things. Uh, we're supposed to mention Pussy Ryan as much as possible uh, to, to prove that there's no censorship going on. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, so one thing that's interesting, I'll just, I'll just talk about this um, for a second. Uh, there's an interesting thing in the Russian. Uh, works is the way that in, instead of creating this kind of um, this, this tension between the artist uh, and the artwork, uh, you have a, a kind of uh, impulse to repeat action. And by not, of course, always uh, would, would do action after action uh, in, in uh, the sort of the, the main part of their uh, career. Uh, but Pussy Riot kind of took it to a next level by repeating this kind of the same action in, in different contexts. Uh, and part of the effect of this is to produce a kind of myth. We were talking about the Cyrillian myth earlier today. Uh, the myth of an underground, the myth of a revolutionary potential that actually doesn't exist. Um, okay, another thing, instead of having this orientation on uh, expression and question of, of communication uh, that you get in the 70s artwork, uh, Russian actionism has, has been really uh, much more connected to, to things, to kind of architectural <coughs> questions, the, the city itself, urban flows, uh, examples like Vinas, uh, uh, one of the first works when they had a, uh, a wake for the, the poet to meet Brigo in the metro, in the metro car, uh, or even the, the famous phallus uh, on the bridge, uh, which has this quality as a kind of kinetic sculpture uh, uh, as the bridge opens up and the, uh, uh, and the, and the phallus appears, uh, but also makes use of this kind of, this, this image of uh, art stopping, uh, participating in, in, you know, taking, you know, sort of uh, appropriating the bridges 
uh, uh, the raised bridges function of stopping traffic, uh, they actually uh, sort of seize that, that uh, function themselves with the work. Um, okay. Skip that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, okay. Yeah, yeah five minutes. Um, the final. Uh, the last of these things that I want to say, talk about is the instead of this arbitrary temporal frame, so I mentioned the way that the uh, the 70s works, they kind of just run out uh, in some way, or you know, so a uh, burden gets to the end of the TV frame is there, and there's no, you don't have a feeling of, of um, on the one hand, it's also not transgressive in the way that I said that the 60s artist is aspiring towards these kind of transgressive effects, but it's kind of pointedly not transgressive, it just kind of exhausts itself. Uh, the Russian works have their own frame, uh, but it's, it's almost always the police, right? The police provide the frame for the artwork, sort of define it, right? Uh, of course, Babiansky is probably the, has, has uh, you get this in, in all of the um, uh, different works, but Babiansky's probably uh, used it uh, most effectively, where he, he gets, you know, he puts himself in this, uh, uh, you know, self-mutilating, uh, condition in one way or another, uh, and just sits there until the police come and then does nothing when they come and just continues to sit there and they have to figure out what to do, right? And that is their task. And of course, he's, he's kind of continued with this part of the project, uh, spending a lot of time documenting how the police arrest him, the different psychiatric evaluations he has to go through, uh, and so on. So the police, uh, and this is something that Vainal is already doing, of course, um, I don't know the picture of it, but, uh, you know, with the, the even the, the um, the bridge, uh, sort of pulling the FS, uh, the FSB, the secret police building, into the, the artwork. Uh, this kind of desire to bring the police into, into the artwork in some way, to, to give it its, its, its sort of roundness and, and wholeness. Uh, okay, so this is the kind of theoretical part. Um, in uh, basically what, I, what I'm trying to say about the 70s body art is that it, it tries to kind of, uh, it exists in some ways in a condition, it's reflecting in some ways a condition uh, where transgression is no longer possible, right? Uh, the sense of, a, of that there, there are limits, uh, but the limits are empty, right? When you try to cross these limits, uh, it's actually, there's actually no experience. And this, you know, we can, uh, we can relate to the, the theory of, of, of bare life that we talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, today, this kind of condition of being abandoned by, by sovereign power, uh, where the law is still there, but as, as a common describes it, it's a it has force without any, any actual significance. Uh, and what's interesting about these, these works is the way the artist, as I was kind of re referring to earlier uh, with that tension, uh, the artist takes on both roles, right? The artist is both imposing this empty law uh, on, on, on himself and occupying the position of the bare life that is, that is uh, in that condition of abandonment. So what you have is in, in the 60s, you still have this kind of sense of a ritualistic, uh, you know, sense of sacrificial violence maybe, uh, being used uh, as, as a political protest, uh, which could be conceived as, as trying to sort of, um, you know, bring about some kind of renewal in, in many means categories. We talk about the, uh, you know, breaking the law in order to, uh, to recover its power. Uh, the 70s starts, you know, with neoliberalism winning, uh, starts instead um, presenting this kind of, uh, this image of, of, of an act that is extermination. Violence no longer has any kind of sacrificial potential. It just exterminates. Um, okay, so uh, the Russian stuff, by contrast, uh, is interesting in these ways. Uh, the actions are transgressive, right? They have a massive transgressive impact. Uh, all sorts of people get extremely upset uh, by these actions. Um, but still, at the same time, I, I don't think that's necessarily the goal uh, of the works, but that is their effect. Uh, so that shows us something about the, the, the kind of uh, culture in which they're emerging. Um, they also uh, often um, draw on uh, kind of uh, images or, or sort of uh, subject the body to, to certain situations uh, that, that recall the, the category of bare life. Um, but the way I want to describe it uh, is that it's not, it's not this affect, affectless extermination that we see in the, in the 70s work, but it's presented as a kind of weird enjoyment. Um, and in Vinod's, of course, extremely sort of uh, uh, um, uh, boisterous enjoyment, uh, as I put it here, you eating and fucking while power sleeps. Um, in Pavlansky, you also get a kind of enjoyment, but he's enjoying it in a more kind of sophisticated uh, way. Uh, so, uh, 
the idea that while the sort of non-vigilant power is sleeping in between the cracks where where um, um, uh, where power is not watching us, we start uh, we, we we have all our biological processes. We are in this condition uh, of of a kind of uh, abandoned uh, state, but it is uh, uh, actually a state of, of enjoyment. It allows us to start putting on the clothes of power, uh, presented again as a kind of debauched uh, you know, a feast or, uh, or, or sexualized experience. Um, and uh, the category, yeah, I should probably start stopping. The category that we should uh, use to, to understand this, I think, is um, one that uh, is often used to talk about late socialist culture, uh, that is Stoll, uh, which uh, is a kind of humor uh, that, when it's presented uh, in uh, the really good Stoll, you don't know whether the person is actually being serious or joking, right? So it's a kind of, it's, it's a theatricality that loses its sense of theatricality, right? It's, it's a performance that, that does not actually um, uh, uh, recognize itself as a performance. So basically this is what I'm saying is this, this enjoyment of, uh, as being in this condition of eating and fucking and, and, go, and, and, and being abandoned by power uh, is, uh, is staged but not in a theatrical way. It's staged to the extent that, that you don't, that you lose, lose track of the way it's been staged. Uh, okay, so I think, uh, I mean I, I have some uh, negative things to say about it too, but I'll, I can skip those, so we should always be positive. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, let's see. Let's, yeah, so maybe just this, this last, you can, if you want to, there's the great criminal action we have uh, here in uh, But just the last thing, um, uh, the specificity of the Russian action is defined by this, this uh, union of what I'm calling bare life and stage enjoyment, which I think it, it, it inherits from the late socialist uh, non-official culture. So, for example, the Necrorealist would be a sort of uh, uh, ideal example um, of this for me, uh, going into the woods, beating each other up with, with sticks in the snow and so on, filming it, but filming it only as a way to kind of continue to enjoy this condition of, of pretending like you're, you're dying and, and uh, enduring um, sort of random violence that, that has no meaning. Um, so, again, it's kind of like it's still where you don't know if it's uh, uh, it's uh, ironic or serious. So it, it takes that position, but puts it into this other context of, of this idea of the using power as a frame, right? This challenging address to power, uh, saying like, you're here, right? But you're not watching us, and look what's happening. Uh, so either disappear completely, uh, or wake up and, and fight.